Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Chioma. In this video, I'll be talking about medical school and how to afford going to medical school as an international student. So, as we all know, medical school is very expensive and as an international student, it's even more expensive because you may end up paying out-of-state tuition that's if you go to a state or federal school. For private schools, it's almost a little bit balanced. And most people end up taking federal loans to be able to afford medical school, and which they would end up paying back eventually with interest. So that is expensive. But as an international student, that's not an option. In this video, we'll talk about some options you have. And then I'll also give some tips um, I feel are helpful, things that... I knew or I didn't know and eventually found out along the way that can also help you while you're trying to choose and determine what school to go to and how to afford your schooling. And as a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. I do not work in a financial aid office. Again, this is, this is just more of my opinion and things that I've learned. Ultimately, you have to do your own research, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, let's get back. Let's get right into it. The first tip or first advice I'll give is to choose a cheap medical school. Yes, you heard right. And I'll talk more about this just so like we're very clear what I mean. There's this belief, and I was part of you know, the group of people that believed this. There's this belief that you do better as a doctor if you go to a top name school or a big name school top ranked big name school all of them like you know the harvard princeton Yale, and all of that so that's what i thought and i really wanted to go to one of these schools unfortunately i that wasn't an option for me because of um one my mcat was average and secondly like i'm non-american so out of my choice like not by or actually not by my choice i ended up going to an average school but along the years i realized that it didn't even matter because the school you go to this really, really doesn't determine your outcome as a doctor. What really determines your outcome is the effort you as an individual puts into your medical education and moving along. So you could go to Harvard, put in effort and do well. You could go to maybe an average school, maybe Mahari, put in effort and still do as well as a person that went to Harvard and vice versa. You could go to Harvard, don't put in efforts, and you fail. And I've seen people that are not doing well that went to Harvard. And then you could go to a, um, a normal average school, for average school, and not put in effort and don't do well. So it doesn't matter. And this is something I realized after the second year of med school, after we took the USMLE exams, because that exam is standardized. So that's how you actually get a chance to see how are students in different schools across the country doing and again i went to an average school it wasn't a top um, rated school it was not a big name school and i was in the 95th or 99th percentile i don't remember but i was pretty high i did way better than a lot of students that went to the ivy league schools and that's because i put in time effort and resources i worked hard to make sure i did well on that exam and so i can imagine that people in other schools that did well whether it's a top school average school low school whatever people that did well put in the effort and people that didn't do well did not put in the effort don't get me wrong having a big name school on your cv can have its advantages because, I mean, these are schools that are recognized everywhere. It can open doors for you um, easily just, you know, through like connections and just, just the name of the school. But it doesn't mean that if you don't go to this that school, you won't do well or you can't get the same opportunities. You can. It just means that you may just have to work a little bit harder than a person that went into that went to that school and has the connect and have has the connection. Does that make sense? Well, I hope it does make sense. So, and then the other thing I was going to say about that is that any medical school in the United States that is accredited follows a specific curriculum. So the only way you can even be accredited is if you follow, um, if you have on your curriculums like certain 
topics and subjects that are recommended by the medical board. So that's what every school, regardless, follows. So as long as your school is accredited, you're going to be learning what you need to learn as a medical student. So it doesn't really matter. Now, if you're able to afford a big name school, you know, a top, top ranked school, by all means do that. But if you're in a position where you're trying to choose, like, you know, I have this top ranked school, I have this average school, but average school is more affordable for me. I would say you should go to the average school because you, it's not going to change your outcome as long as you work hard. And as an international student, you should plan on working hard because you can't put in the same efforts and work as an American and, and uh, expect to do as well as them. Because if you think about residency programs, jobs, hospitals, and nobody wants to hire a foreign person because for them, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of investment because they'll have to go through the whole immigration process, trying to make sure you're legal to work there. And it's just so much more work for them. So for a program to feel like it's worth them putting all that resources and time and work to try to get you into their program or to work for them, you have to be exceptional. So if there's you and there's an American and you guys have the same qualifications, you're gonna go with the American because it's just easier for them. But for a program or for a hospital to choose, you have to be exceptional. So just always have that mindset that I have to put in more work than my American colleague, if that makes any sense. So that being said, as an international student, you're going to put in a lot of work regardless. So it doesn't matter whether you go to top name school, average name school, lower tier school. It's the work you put in, which you should be putting in a lot of work. So if you're unable to afford comfortably a, an expensive school, I don't think you should kill yourself or put yourself in a lot of debt just because you want to attend that school you can have you can attend a an average school that's more affordable and still have the same outcome and if you're still confused about this just send me a message i can try and do one-on-one -on -one and explain this better to you and one thing i was going to also mention about cheap medical schools and it's not actually funny enough the highly the highest ranked schools are actually not the most expensive they're on the average like on the average a medical school will cost like fifty thousand dollars a year so that's about two hundred thousand in the four years that's a lot of money um so your harvards princeton dukes and your all those big name schools cost around that there are some other schools that are also good schools um but not necessarily big name schools that cost way higher than that i've seen one that costs even up to a hundred thousand dollars a year very pointless like what's the point of doing that and then you have other schools that are cheaper so i know schools in texas generally tend to be cheaper and this is something i didn't know um previously it was after i got into med school that i realized that texas schools tend to be cheaper they're on the average about twenty thousand. 20 to 30,000 a year. So that's cheaper than your, the average medical school. And then schools that cater to minorities, so mostly historical black, black colleges, like the H, um, HBCUs, like Howard, Meharry, Morehouse, those schools um, also tend to be on the cheaper side. And some other state schools. So you just have to like go online and do your research on that. But one thing I found out was like Texas schools on the average, even some of the even some of the private Texas schools were on the cheaper side. So you know that's a tip that you can um, consider when you're considering schools. And then secondly, after you've chosen the school you want, or like you've narrowed down your schools based on the costs, again cheaper school that's accredited will give you the same outcome as expensive school that is also accredited but just has a bigger name there's really not much of a big difference in outcome with that okay so secondly the next step would be seeking scholarships again because you're a non-american or as a non as an international student, you don't qualify for federal loans, but one thing you can do is scholarships. And that was something I used 
what I'll say with these scholarships, because again, it's an investment. So most schools would not just go and throw and give you scholarship like that. Most times they it's a merit-based scholarship. And most times they want you to go through a year first to prove to them that you're taking this medical school thing very serious and that they're not wasting their money by awarding you the scholarship. So it's usually after the first year, if you do very well, then they can afford, you know, they can afford some schools do full scholarships, some do half. In my school, I got a half scholarship, so that was helpful. It wasn't full, but at least it was still helpful. It cut down the cost by a lot for me. And really, um, some big name schools like Harvard, Princeton, Duke, Yale, Vanderbilt, they do, because they have money, so they do tend to offer more scholarship but again you have to be exceptional you have like if the average american medical student is like here you have to be all the way up there so it's like you have to stand out so how do you stand how do you stand out you have to make sure your mcat is way above average that was a mistake i made i was like i had an average mcat score it didn't help me so you have to make sure your mcat score is really good have you know research experiences publications go to conferences just be out there like have a very good cv that they look at you and be like wow you know this person is way ahead of their um way ahead of their what you'd expect like at the level at which they are in so when you have that there's a chance that you can get like a full scholarship or almost full scholarship and Again, it's mostly the bigger name schools that have the, that kind of money to offer that. So that's an option. But most times, the schools that would give you a scholarship would want you to have done a year. So you have to pay for a year first and then do well. Prove to them that their money would not be in waste. And then from your second year onwards, then you can get a scholarship. And that's what I did. Then the next option um, is obviously self-funding. So it's either you've saved money or your family has um, is able to afford to pay for you. Most international students go through that, um, go that route because they don't really have much of other options for payments. And that's why the first tip I said, choosing a cheap medical school makes it easier for you like imagine going to a school that costs twenty five thousand a year versus a school that costs fifty thousand a year if you have to pay out of pocket for that it's easier for you to pay for the school that costs twenty five thousand a year again you going to a more expensive school doesn't mean you do better or you going to a cheaper school doesn't mean you do worse it's your effort what how what you make out of it that matters and i'm going to keep saying that okay so yes so that's the third um tip self-funding then the fourth tip which a lot of people did not know about i didn't know about it until after medical school is private loans yes so even though as an international student, you don't qualify for federal loans, you can get private loans. I think the private loans may have higher interest. I'm not sure, but that's something you have to look into. Some banks do that, like Discover and Wells Fargo provide federal loans. You may need a collateral. You may need a co-signer, something, um, I don't know, something to like, Proof to them that you you're able you'll be able to pay back, and I feel like just the fact that you're going to medical school, they know you're going to be a doctor, and as a doctor, you you will earn more than average, and so that in itself for them is assurance that you should be able to afford to pay back the loan. And there's this website I saw online. It is I think it's called privatestudentsloan.com. So that's something you can also look into and see what the private loans are. And the thing about loans, again, is interest. And the interest can be high. So if you're able to save money, if your family is able to help out with paying your school, your tuition and living expenses, I'll say it's best to go that route. And you know, if you have to pay them back later, that's better because then you won't have to pay interest versus these loans where the interest keeps accumulating because if you take out a two hundred thousand dollar loan you may end up paying up to three hundred thousand at the end of it 
So that's just something to consider. But then if you're absolutely in a position where like there's, you know, there's no way you can afford paying out of pocket, then that's something you can consider. And then in addition to private loans, there are institutional loans. So some schools would give their own loans. And I feel like those, um, the interest rate for, from the schools are a little bit less than other private loans. Again, don't quote me. These are things like you should ask the financial um, aid office in your schools. And if you go to open houses or if you're talking to schools, these are like questions to ask them about, like, do they provide institutional loans and what is their rates? And then also ask about like scholarship opportunities. So yeah, those are my four or five tips about paying for medical school. I hope um, this is helpful. Again, it's not an exhaustive um, list. Um, there's, you know, I'm sure there's more information out there, but this can help as a foundation to, um, as you start thinking about it, it can help direct you like which questions to ask when you're meeting with schools or when you're considering schools. So just to summarize, one, choose a cheap or I would say affordable school because it doesn't determine your outcome as a doctor. Secondly, look into scholarships and like programs that afford that award scholarships to students. Third, consider the self um funding option, you know, saving, asking family to help out and chip in to pay as much as you can. Then fourthly looking into private loans. Again, I'll try and put it in the description some of the um banks or websites that have some of that information and fifths and loans from your school institutional loans well if you enjoyed this video if you found it helpful please leave a comment and like the video if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and let me know if there's if you have like any questions or there any if there's any other topic that you would want me to talk about i was thinking about for my next video to talk about the usmle exams because that's a very important exam. That's its own. That's like the exam that actually determines your future as a doctor. And um, I did really well on the exam, so I can I can share my experience and how I was able to do well on my USMLE exams. All right. Have a blessed week ahead. Bye.